No, I started creating, I started writing books when I was like nine. I just really liked creating from a young age. But I hated how, you know, you have one idea for a book and then you spend a year working on it. And then by the time you finish, you have 20 more ideas. You're like, I, can't, I couldn't keep up with it. I originally wrote it when I was still in the church. And I wrote it as a, as a, like a Christian song uh, from the perspective of Jonah. And in the, one of the lines is, throw me in the waves. And uh, then when I left the church, I changed the lyrics to better, to be like more honest with where I was right now. What's <laughs> up, fam? What's going on? Yeah. Marvick Productions. Hope everybody's doing well. Appreciate everybody checking in right now. My name is Marlon, host. I got my co-host, Victor Rodriguez. How you doing, G? Doing great, man. Good, good. Excited. We got, yo, to our left, peep, peep to the left over here, we got... Two stars in the making. Let's go. You guys recognize the homie putting up the peace sign. What up, what up? With the Wade. purple hair. With the purple hair. With the purple hair. I'm purple back. Hair. Rudy, Welcome. he's yeah. back. Welcome back, bro. Hey, thank you, bro. Good to Let's see go. you, G. Yes, sir. My man. You just came off of uh, your first show. We were, we're, no, your second, second show. Second show in L.A. We were there. It was our first Rudy experience. It's Rudy your Wade. first Rudy Wade yeah. show. Let's That's see. right. That's great, right. Bro. Yeah, so I want to talk about that. And um, you... Yeah. Yeah, you hit us up this morning. You're like, hey, I got somebody special coming in. We made it happen. We usually don't do this on a Monday night, but appreciate Bryce and, you know, the whole team. And who? Well, I'll let you do a little bit of an intro, but who's uh, who's the homie to the left here? Who's So right here, we got, we got LeGrand. LeGrand. Flying What's in up, from Arizona. Okay. What's up, bro? AC? Come on. <laughs> give, give yourself a little introduction. Tell them about yeah. yourself. Uh, I, just a dude making... TikToks in his mom's attic. I guess. Uh, yeah, I decided to come out here. I like shooting videos with Rudy, and it gives like a schedule. We can get some work done. And he's like, "Hey, you want to be on a podcast?" I'm like, "Hell yeah, I want to be on a podcast." Yeah, let's do it. yeah. So, no, I appreciate you coming. You yeah. said this is your first podcast, and like being on a first podcast. Yeah, first yeah. time ever doing a podcast. I love the oh. octopus of Mike Arms. It's uh, all right. It's yeah, <laughs> I, the whole the whole experience. It's, yeah. it's awesome. Yeah, yeah. I'm glad I you're mean, enjoying it. it. It's a good way to get your, you know, put yourself out there more, so people could uh, get more familiarized with your, with you as well. So we, as a person, you know, they yeah. know your music, but they don't know you like they don't who like you know are. Who I am. Right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's a good yeah. point, and and that's one of the things that we did with Rudy, and and there's still more to obviously uncover and, and learn, but that's one of our uh, parts of our vision where we want to bring people on board and and get to know them, you know, like mm -hmm. on a personal level, like who they are and where they come from and how you got to be where you're at. So we'll definitely dive into right. more with you on that side. Cause we know yeah. a little bit of Rudy, but for sure, you know, we'll obviously intertwine that, but no, we appreciate you. I, you're here till Wednesday. I'm here till Wednesday. Yeah. Okay. So nice. I know you probably have a lot of stuff to do, so yeah, it means a lot to us. We're, I mean, I mean, Marvick Productions is getting started, you know, in a few years, yeah. I think we can, we'll Look play back this at back. This. Yeah. No, you guys, oh, for sure. You guys remember that? Yeah. Remember that? <laughs> so, we're going to get big, I'm telling but, uh, you. Uh, yeah. I know earlier off the off the cameras, you were kind of mentioning how, uh, you know, you kind of had a set schedule already, like, since the moment you got off the plane. Do you want to share that a little bit? Like, yeah. the itinerary that Rudy had for you? Yeah, it's the best, because, like, like, I tell Rudy, hey, uh, I kind of want to do a content shoot. Like, you want to be, you mind if I could stop by in L.A.? He's like, yeah, you can stay at my house. We can do this, 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 this. He sends me, like, a whole fucking itinerary yeah. of, like, all this stuff we're gonna do. Uh, we had every hour scheduled. Exactly. Yeah, <laughs> yep. we left the house at ten this morning. We did. Um, we were doing a production session for like four hours. Nice. Then after that, we shot content with uh, Dark Side, the yeah, videographer. Uh, the videographer Dark Side. He also did uh, the show video for me. Okay. Uh, he's super dope. I shoot all my TikTok performance videos with him. Nice. So Dark Side is his name. Yeah, Dark Side. You should the, definitely have him on the pod. He by was the at way. the show. You'll yeah, be next. He, he's he's really phenomenal with for the sure. edits like yeah i'll check him out super fire. Probably saw him was he sure. the latino guy no oh, he no. he has like uh red hair like red hair i think i missed that yeah, yeah. Me it was a little dark in there <laughs> definitely definitely yeah. but he's super talented i would totally have him on the pod gotcha yeah. we'll, we'll work, work that out. out definitely yeah. yeah and uh then we now we're here now we're here so nice. this nice. is our third stop That's of good. the day I'm curious. How do you guys know each other? How do you, I mean, yeah. obviously, yeah. Guys, yeah. that's a crazy. That, that story is a crazy actually. story. So let's go ahead and hear it. It's a good segue. You guys are obviously musicians, and yeah, uh -huh. you're doing yeah. music together. But yeah, so how'd I, you? Guess, I guess I'll take it away here. Mm -hmm. uh, so I was living with John Master Productions, right. uh, producer, engineer. You know, mm -hmm. uh, and man of many talents. Right. Many talents. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, the tech wizard. He any any computer problem you have, he'll fix yeah. it. Yeah, I believe but, that. Uh, one of one of the artist that we mutually know came in to work with John and I was just chilling in my room. I came out. I'm like, Oh, what's up, bro? He was like, Oh, what's up? We, you know, dapped it up. 
like chopped it up a little bit, yeah. got each other on Instagram. And then me and him eventually became friends. We did a show together. Or my first LA show I did with him. Yeah. Uh, and then we were, we were cool. So I was like, Hey, why don't you pull up and do some content? We did some content at my house. And then I was like, yo, so do you know any other artists that I would sound good with? I would work well mm -hmm. with. And he was like, actually I know like a couple people and Legrand was on the list. So mm -hmm. I reached out to Legrand. I was like, Hey, you're dope. Like, Let's do something. You so. checked out his music. Yeah, and you're I checked like, his stuff mm -hmm. out. I was like, it's nice, super cool. Nice. How do you, Um, I mean, I'm, that's that's pretty cool. How do you decide for you personally? I guess you guys are both going to have maybe similar or different answers, but mm -hmm. how do you decide who <laughs> sounds good to you? I've never thought about that, but like, are, are it, good with you? At, it really collaborating? depends on like, number one, I think the most important thing for me is the following that they have because, you know, I'm going to give them my fans. So I want them to you know give some fans that's back. fair that's fair uh, mm -hmm. and secondly the next most important thing is if i think their music's good right you know? right and if i think their music's good and they have a following you know win -win. it doesn't matter what genre they're in we can kind of collab make, you'll make it happen you will yeah. make we'll cross between the realms mm -hmm. to create a sound that it fits for both of us. Yeah. So, so what was it about Le, Legrand's uh, music or style that stood out to you the most? Is that Honestly, saxophone, baby? It, it was definitely <laughs> the, the saxophone. saxophone. Yeah. saxophone. <laughs> oh, yeah. But, yeah, the saxophone. Probably. The saxophone. Uh, okay. That's that, a, that's that is your different. thing, right? It's the thing, yeah. It's the thing that kind of, like, makes me yeah. different from all the other Do you, do you have it in, the, in your bag or in the car? I wish I brought it, yeah, man. I, I should have had it for the shoot. That would have been crazy. It would have blown out all the mics. Hell, yeah. 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 Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> maybe, sure. maybe it's best you didn't bring it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I it. Something different. But, yeah. Uh, yeah, so that that that's your instrument. That's your best friend, you can say. Uh, I mean, what did, you, did you learn how to play? Um... Yeah, so what happened, I was in seventh grade when okay. I learned how to play, so it's been like eight years or something. Uh, Only eight years no, in seventh grade? No, not eight years. Wait. Wait, you're 15? <laughs> Let's roll that back. <laughs> drinking? Let's roll Cut. that back. Hey, bring that I was here. 11, I'm 20. It's been 12 years. Okay. 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 That's was, more like it. I'm really fast at math, not really good at math. It's okay. okay. Um, the, the whiskey's hitting. It's okay. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> sure it is a little bit. <laughs> Just a smell it's of it. It's the jet lag, bro. We got we yeah. to take it easy on the ground. I'm, I'm sure it is. No, okay. I... Uh, I had to pick an instrument for middle school. Okay. Either that or choir, and I knew I hated choir. Mm -hmm. So I was like, okay. I, I was in choir. You were in choir? Yeah. I, I wish I'd done it now. I was uh, I was a tenor. You Really? Yeah, and I was behind all the big Can you hit up some girls. notes? Oh. Let's hear the notes. <laughs> no, 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 no. You, 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 you missed the part. I said I was behind the big booty girl. So oh. I, was, uh, man, he, I wasn't there to sing. I was there to. Marlon was singing, uh, singing at the church choir, too. Okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah, really? that's true. That's true. That's yeah. sick, man. Yeah. But don't ask me to sing. I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't be good for y'all collaboration oh, man kind of jealous of tenors i wish i could hit those high notes bro that's rudy no Rudy's that it's the him. well the ten <laughs> yeah they're the altos are the <laughs> alto yeah yeah they're the ones that you know yeah, i true. can't reach it all but sorry that's okay good. so that's your middle school yeah so yeah i was like hey put me on the bagpipes and my mom was like okay she checked they did not teach bagpipes <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I, 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 bagpipes. I guess they i wanted to learn bagpipes. the bagpipes i thought that'd be so sick yeah you uh, don't see that often my seventh grade brain thought that would be like the cool <laughs> thing to do makes sense yeah. um and then i was like okay fine bagpipes isn't an option sexy sax man's funny <laughs> let's learn the saxophone mm -hmm. and maybe the best decision i've ever made in my whole life to yeah <laughs> so, the saxophone. so did you know at that point that you wanted to you know, create music and content, or was it just kind of like you learned how to play the saxophone and um, from there? No, I started creating, I started writing books when I was like nine. I just really liked creating from a young age, mm -hmm. but I hated how, you know, you have one idea for a book and then you spend a year working on it. And then by the time you finish, you have 20 more ideas. You're like, yeah. I can't, I couldn't keep up with it. Mm -hmm. But when mm -hmm. I started playing the saxophone, I transitioned into writing sheet music mm -hmm. and I would go onto this, like this website that has like sheet music writing on it. Mm -hmm. And I would just pump out songs and I would do like yeah. three a weekend. Um, yeah. And from there, so like as soon as I started playing the saxophone, I started writing songs probably like two or three months after I got it. And so mm. at a, what, 12 years old, 13? At like, I started probably before I turned 12. Shit. Yeah, I've bro. just never had that. I've never had, I don't know about you, but I'm, asked, I'm trying to remember what I was doing at 11, bro. It was, it was <laughs> no, I'm always, yeah. I'm always yeah. impressed. I'm like, damn, like yeah. I'm, I'm curious like where that comes from. And obviously, it's different for each individual. Dude, I actually like, think that it has something to do with genetics. Like, really? Okay, I, I was thinking. Um, do yeah, I mean, sure. I was gonna say. I was gonna say. I know it's yeah, natural okay. for some, where it's just organic. I know 
some come from like a music background and their parents. Well, and that's, that's, that's the funny thing. My family, my dad's side of the family, they're all musicians. They all play the guitar, piano. They can sing. That shit didn't trickle down to well, me. Well, I, I think <laughs> I think that it somewhat has something to do with yeah. Neither of my parents are instrument uh, musicians, mm-hmm. but uh, I there are musicians in my extended heritage. Like that, like my my heritage goes all the way back to like ancient <laughs> Norway. But back then in my family, there was you know musicians. So I think it doesn't you know come down to everybody in the family. Mm-hmm. But I think that. It, it, it stays in the heritage, generations. yeah, think, uh, for sure. I think I, I got the fighting side of the family. Yeah, you yeah, might have got, got the boxing pride. Yeah, yeah, you got yeah. the angry boxing. <laughs> like, but yeah, no, my grandfather, man, he uh, he played the guitar. He wrote he's wrote songs. Actually, one of my uncles um, is is gonna release a song of my grandfather. See, it runs in the family. Yeah, so like that side of the family, you know, they they sing they. Freaking play the guitar. Beautiful. I've seen you post uh, stories when you go to Mexico. Yeah, yeah I go out it looks there. Cool. It's dope, man. It's dope too. It, it reminds me a lot of the movie Coco. Where in know? Mexico is really? it? You, you uh, so it's a, a Sonora, Mexico, but uh, every year we get together in Arizona at a place called Mount Lemon. Arizona. Mount Lemon. Yeah, Mount Lemon, Tucson, Arizona. In Tucson. Now we know. Next Gonna invite family. you. Hell yeah! Invite me to the family gathering. Yeah, so we all get <laughs> we all get together there, man, <laughs> and you know, I'm the only white guy. Yeah, it's okay. No, no, you you wouldn't be. Oh, cool. we, got, we got white people in the family too now. Oh hell yeah! No, <laughs> <laughs> but we call those weddos. We, we call, call weddos. Them. Weddos. Yeah. I thought you know it was, what a weddo is. I thought it uh-huh. was. I thought they it's call like a it gringo. Gringo. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Gringo? gringo. I know gringo. Well, yeah. Well, the they funny call thing me is gringo. I, I'd be considered a gringo out in Mexico too, really, because I'm born here. Yeah. Really? So yeah. What? They refer really? to us. No. Yeah, they refer to us as <laughs> gringos as well. Yeah. A gringo Mexicanos will call you a gringo. Yep. Yep. We're not just because they're white. That doesn't mean you're. A gringo. They call me a gringo. Yeah, they call me a gringo too. <laughs> that makes sense. <laughs> yeah, you're a gringo. This doesn't make sense. <laughs> nah, Wait, bro, don't, don't you speak a little Anybody Spanish? from the other side yeah, I they speak call basically gringos. fluent Spanish. He speaks fluent Spanish. Really? Habla español. Habla español, wey. He said, wey. He yeah, said, wey. You learn what? Spanish? Wey, what? Yo vivía en Uruguay por un año sirviendo una misión. Oh, shit. Mission de qué? Uruguay? Mission de... And we got to come back because obviously, Rudy, yeah. we can't lose. I'm lost. Sorry, we can't, we can't be speaking Spanish. Yeah, we'll keep, well, oh, for a little shit. bit though. What, okay. what? Mission de qué? Uh, yo estaba sirviendo una misión, <laughs> una misión de, de la iglesia de Jesucristo de los Santos de la Última Oh, tía. sí. Él me dijo, eras, eras mormón, ¿no? Era mormón, la verdad. ¿Sos mormón o eras? Ya no. Uh, ya no. Ok. Estoy... No, pues los mormones pueden tomar. No, no pueden. No, no, puede. no, nada de alcohol. Nada, nada, no, nada no, de no, alcohol, no. nada de té, nada de café. Yeah. Wow. Por eso en Utah, como a las 5 p.m. ya paran de, de vender um, alcohol. alcohol yeah. uh-huh. Y después de... Um, <laughs> No, no venden. Sorry, we'll, we'll bring it back to English. How does it feel? Dude, no venden más de 5% de uh, alcohol. Mm. Por eso en Utah toman uh. mucho como Bud Light, Budweiser. So, so he, uh, you seen. probably know this. No, but ni, ni pueden tomar cerveza. No, no, lo, no. Los no, que, que no allá, son mormones. Ah, yeah. Sí, que venden allá nomás como yeah. alcohol, pero no, no muy fuerte. Yeah, y lo cortan uh, como a las 5 p.m. Mm. So, yeah. so, um... He he lit. He obviously speaks Spanish. He lived, <laughs> crazy, he lived in Uruguay yeah. for a year. He was there on a mission. Yeah, I was like, oh yeah. Rudy mentioned you used to be Mormon. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Uh He's not Mormon anymore. Uh, and doesn't he? Well, clearly, he's drinking alcohol. Yeah. Mormons yeah, are not allowed to <laughs> drink. <laughs> what do you mean? I'm not a That's Mormon. Just apple That's just dope, juice. man. So we gotta we gotta definitely dive into that. Yeah. So how long did you live in Uruguay for? Uh, a year. A year, and in in one year you learned Spanish. Yeah. Dang, okay. But you learned it you learned it prior. Obviously you prepared yourself or, or uh no, that was part of the year actually. For six weeks mm-hmm. I lived in Mexico City. Oh just shit. Just like in this like walled so compound. You're, you're more Mexican than he is. <laughs> <laughs> A little bit, <laughs> maybe. Probably, bro. You lived there. I, I never lived in Mexico. I mean, I don't know if I could say I lived there because it's like this church owned property with like fifteen foot high cement walls. Uh-huh. And so I never like I never left. Uh-huh. Mm. It was like I was surrounded by like white people from Utah. Oh, okay. And then like a couple like yeah, yeah a couple yeah, yeah. Mormons from like mm. I don't know, parts of Latin America. But That's dope though. I mean, w- would you guys go out there and you know uh preach to to the people or Yeah, bro, we would door we knock. Would door knock like crazy. Uh-huh. I got sick of that eventually and just started like planning what, what, random activities. What's a what's a crazy story you could tell us about door knocking out yeah. there in Mexico? Please. <laughs> okay, here's one of the craziest things that We happened. talk in Mexico or Uruguay? Or this is Uruguay Mexico. right now. Uruguay. I never knock doors in Mexico. Oh, okay. okay, good. Um <laughs> 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 I I was knocking doors in, in Uruguay and this little kid comes up. He's like, "What's up, elders?" and he looks like f- he looks like 2, but he talks like he's 6. Mm-hmm. And I was like, "What is going on with this guy?" <laughs> and he's just like like 
chatting shit with us, like mm-hmm. just like risen it up. Mm-hmm. And and his dad comes out. Uh-huh. He's like, oh, what's up, elders? Like, come hang out with us. Mm-hmm. And we go. We teach him a they lesson. They know to call you elders. I don't. I don't know how to like. I don't know what he called me, but he was okay. like, hey, okay. come, okay, come teach enough. a lesson. Yeah, got you, got you. And he would like bring his friends, and they would just like watch us teach, and then like take selfies. Mm-hmm. And I didn't know until after we we talked to some members about this new guy we were teaching. They're like, "That's the drug dealer. Oh, that's that's the drug lord of the town. The yeah. two year old? That you no, know. not the two year old. The dad. Father. Sorry, <laughs> the I, I, I got lost a little king. bit. I thought you were saying the two year old that looks oh, like yeah. six no, is the drug dealer of the town. Okay, okay. Yeah, you were preaching to the drug I was, dealer. We were preaching to the drug dealer, and uh-huh. he thought it was like funny that we were teaching. So he was like, "Hey, he was taking stuff. He sent it to his oh, friends. He was trolling. He was totally trolling." Because okay, he was okay. probably like, they, they have no clue who the fuck I am, you know? Yeah, that's yeah. exactly what it was. Hey, that's crazy. I mean, Damn. So, uh, you know, okay, check this out. I, um, I'm um, i Christian, and I've okay, done cool. a couple mission trips myself. No way. Yeah, so I've actually been to, um, maybe I can't say. Um, Bro, I'll but say I've been, I've been No, don't say it. I've been to the Middle <laughs> East. Um, it's very sensitive, but I've been to the Middle East, uh, and I've been to Indonesia. I know I can talk about that one. Okay, cool. Um, those are the only two places, but Indonesia is the has the largest Muslim population in the whole world. You'd think mm-hmm. it come from the Middle East, but actually it, it's it's specifically Indonesia. Indonesia. Same thing. We went to go preach the gospel, and we were there for like two weeks. Uh, we mostly work with college groups, um, so it was quite the experience just doing all of that and putting yourself in a third world country and. Mm-hmm. You know, just mm-hmm. serving out there. So when you say college groups, do you mean you were doing it like? With other college yeah. age people, or were you teaching college age people? No, so I was part of. Uh, did you ever hear of Chi Alpha? No, never no, heard of or it. like, uh, what's the other one? Like Intervarsity is a big one. Do you know about that one? No. no. Um, well, I was part of a, a, a fellowship called Chi Alpha, and and through that fellowship and organizations, an organization, they're connected with Assemblies of God. Uh, I have heard of that one. Yeah, they're, they're a big one. So then we, you know, made it happen. They made it happen for us. We had to raise the money, and then once we got there. We got to um, connect with college groups over there where it was a cultural internship, but really we were there to pray with them and, you know, really just love on them and show them that. Like, That's hey, pretty dope, man. I, I never experienced that, but I think that would be pretty cool. It's it's different. It's different. You know? It's definitely different. I, well, it's yeah. it's 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 hard. It's it's uh challenging. I mean, I'm I'm not. I mean, it, I think you guys like like Mormons, I should say, I think you guys are much better trained like you guys are hardcore in my opinion oh it's crazy yeah so i think you guys are probably mentally more ready for something for us it was like hey who wants to go on a missions trip you know it's like all right you got to raise this much money and and don't get me wrong we were trained but i think you guys are more properly like prepared for situations like that at least from what i see in one sense so yeah like and i think give me an example yeah i'll I'll let him touch on but i think from what i know it's you guys it's it's more it's more thorough like you guys dedicate a lot more time you know years i've talked to a lot of mormons they come to my house and i spent uh, they're cool like i spent like hours talking about the gym and weightlifting and all this shit and it's like martin's like come in come in here sit down (laughs) here's the bible (laughs) well he he was actually telling me before that like the when when he's door knocking, he prefers when they invite him in because then he doesn't have to go knock on other people's doors and you sure. can just preach, right? Yeah. yeah, 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 and and but but yeah, I mean, yeah. what what's yeah, what's you grew up in Utah? Yeah. So obviously, Utah is known is known for Mormon. Mormon. Yeah. That's yeah. like the thing, yeah. Yeah, it's like exactly. What uh, did you have a choice, or is your parents just put you in there? Or? I mean, is it a, a part of the family already, like the religion? I mean. Right. One of the founding tenets of the religion is that, like, everything is a choice. Like, you, you're you not forced to do anything, but you're not forced to go to heaven. Mm-hmm. But, uh, the no, the prophet's, like, every worthy, able-bodied male mm-hmm. is commanded to go on a mission. Mm-hmm. And I remember, like, three years old in primary school, we were singing the song, I hope they call me on a mission. Like, mm-hmm. like we were taught from, from day one— See? You're going to be going on a mission, and we would think about it. People they would ask, won't. where do you want to go? Like, it's this huge cultural thing. Yeah, so me- right. mentally preparing you already at oh, a yeah. young age. Then for six vision. weeks, you're Three learning the language, yeah. and then they just they throw you in. Yeah. And it's it's 10 hours a day, I think. You, you started working at, like, 9. You stopped at, like, 9. It's probably, like, 12 hours, maybe a little bit less for lunch. This is, like, um, school, pretty much? Um. Oh, no. The, the MTC was was 
yeah, like six weeks, you spend half of it like memorizing scriptures, the other half of it learning whatever language you're going to be. And so like Mormonism, you guys have right. your own book, right? It's not the Bible or is it? It's no, the, the way I'm sorry. Are you still Mormon? No. no. Okay. Cause I'm I keep not. saying you, okay. No, I, it's, it's fine. I don't, yeah, I don't want to, I mean, technically, I guess I am. I never, I never said, Hey, take me out. Sure. So my okay. records are still in there somewhere. I was going to ask you gotcha. about that. I just haven't really gotten hey, around take to me it. Out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, can you guys remove me? <laughs> he takes my old bishop. Uh, yeah. What, what's your guys's book? What do you guys, um, uh, it's like the plot line for it is like this dude is in Jerusalem right before Babylon invades. Is this Joseph? No, uh, Joseph is the guy who wrote it. This is like the character he wrote about. Mm. Um, so there's this guy in 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 Jerusalem right yeah. before Babylon invades. I think it's like 450 BC, if I remember right. I might be off there. And uh, and basically God tells him, hey, leave your city and go to America. And so he builds a boat, crosses the Pacific Ocean or Atlantic Ocean, yeah, yeah. and goes mm-hmm. to America. And uh, and then they start like the Native American civilization, mm. and then it's like a story of like how Christianity worked in the Native Americas before Columbus came. came. Uh huh. And uh, That's interesting. My family, I, I got a part of my family that they're Mormons, but I've never really like dived into the religion with them because I got a half of the family is Mormon, the other half are um, Jehovah Witnesses, and then really? Christianity. That's got to be a crazy family reunion. Bro. Yeah, yeah. You know what though? It's funny because they don't really <laughs> touch. Is there even a reunion? Yeah, that, yeah. That's, that's part of the reunion. But um, <clears throat> I know there's certain things that they don't share or are a part of because well, of the religion. I feel like nowadays, a, a lot of people really just accept that everyone else is going to be doing their own thing, and it's, it's which I, I which I think they've accepted it now. But I know back then it was probably more of a conflict. touchy topic. Yeah, topic. yeah for sure. I don't know, man. I think I think it's I think it's gotten worse to be honest. Really? Yeah, I think I would argue the the opposite that I think it's gotten so sensitive that people can't even. I'll give you an example, man. So this is this I didn't tell you about this, but. This just happened to us, Marvic Productions. Uh, we just posted a reel of. Uh, like, oh, how do you feel about Strickland? Strickland saying this and that. He's like, look, he can say whatever the fuck he wants. Yeah, like, yeah. You he's know, a grown man. He's a grown sure. man. Yeah, and maybe because he's dealing with fighters, he's a little bit different. <laughs> they could whoop some ass, but it's still, you know, it's yeah. um. So so yeah, it's 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 rare to see. It's that different. Yeah. It is. Yeah. It definitely is different, and I definitely think it it is especially important for artists and you know youtubers to be media trained like that because your career could end like that if you say yep. the wrong thing mm-hmm. for sure unfortunately yeah. for sure unfortunately. yeah I, but I, I wonder though like on the other side of like of that um just those scenarios like i wonder if careers really would be destroyed and i know there's examples of careers that have been but you know, I think maybe in some of those examples, musicians or artists, whatever, they've maybe said some really bad shit. Um, but I, I don't know. I feel like if you, if, if, and I'm generally speaking, but if artists mm-hmm. and athletes, whatever, famous people were to express themselves more, they might lose some fans. But I think They're you also gain. might gain more. I actually have seen, I've seen it go both ways for sure. Yeah, yeah, I've, that's fair. That's I've, fair. I've seen people really speak out on on their like views, Ooh. political and religious, and then. They go up. Right. But I've also seen people that speak out on their views, and well, they think, go down. Yeah. I think Strickland is the best example of that. You know, I'm sure he lost people. He's a UFC fighter, was a world champion, uh, but he also gained a lot of fans. So in UFC, is it important him. to have a fan base like that? Yes. Yeah, yeah because you want to yeah. sell tickets. You want to be able to sell fights. Oh, it's so kind of like it's kind of like how we need to sell concert tickets. It's, so they it's have the to sell tickets yeah, to the fight. It's it's a, yeah. So so fighters and athletes in general. Um, and and I know this because there's a there's a YouTube video of actually the UFC hosting uh, like a conference where they invite their own fighters to teach them like, hey, you want to make a lot of money, you want to like retire early, you want to you know have a lucrative career, learn to market yourself. So mm-hmm. it's this yep. stuff mm-hmm. we talk about all the yeah. time. So it's really no different. Like it, they yeah. get they get a certain percentage off of pay per views. Okay. So the more mm-hmm. eyes on them, the more controversial, the more people yeah. know them, the more money they're yeah, going to make. Yeah, and that's a lot of times why the these YouTubers are boxing because they have huge oh, yeah. audiences. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, and that's yeah. Really that makes good. a lot of sense. Eyes on the fight. Yeah. They're and, getting paid, and personally, yeah, I think time. that's brilliant too. Like yeah. for uh, sure. What I, do you think? I know you're you're an actual like you know what, bro. You come uh, from the real boxing I, I, I community. I wasn't I wasn't a fan of it 
Um, the YouTube boxing? And I'm still not, like, you know, to be specific, like, with Jake Paul and all that, because yeah, yeah. I, don't, I don't think he, mm. like, he's that good. But I think a lot of people want to see him get punched in the face. Yeah. For sure. but, and, 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 and that's the thing, though. That's the thing, right? So many people want to see him get knocked out that guess what? They're going to be tuning into the fight. Exactly. And that... Uh, right. Wait, you don't I'm think he's as good as a professional boxer? Well, that's or, the thing, bro. Because, look, his last fight was against a professional boxer, but really, how talented is he? But also, like, boxer? you don't you don't know if these things are, are you know, scripted. Staged. Yeah. yeah. Like, they could, he could be like, Somewhat. hey, I'm, I'm Jake Paul. I'm going to give you and your team $500,000. We're going to win this fight. Right. Yeah. You know? that, that, that could definitely happen. There are happen. rumors of that, yeah. Yeah. But like with this cat, you know, there was there was going around that this the Uber bit, driver. Yeah, he was an Uber driver and a cashier uh, at a at a gas station, some shit like that. So it's kind of like, okay, yeah, he's a professional boxer, but how dedicated is he really to the sport? Yeah. You know, like mm-hmm. guy probably hasn't trained in years, but he's a professional boxer. He has a license. Anybody could go uh, to their commission and get a license. You know, mm-hmm. to be a, become a professional boxer. But how dedicated are you really to the sport? But um. You know, he's, he he used that to his advantage because Jake Paul has a big following. So guess what? People are going to be tuning in. And it really becomes how many butts can you sit in a chair? If you could sell out an arena. Same with concert tickets. Yourself, yeah. yeah right. that, that's right. really what it comes down to, bro. So, I mean, the, the kid, you know, kudos to him. He's doing his thing. He's making his money. And he's bringing different eyes to the sport. Totally. Uh, but that's also another thing is mm-hmm. yeah. that th- all I'm that stuff is he actually increasing the popularity yeah. of the sport in itself. It's which like you said, like you look at, you know, people to collaborate, like how many followers mm-hmm. do they have? It's not even about followers, to be honest. It's more about f- like fans. Yeah. How many how many people yeah. like really rock with you? Because there's so many people that have a ton of followers, but zero fans. That's like, that's actually so true. They're not the same. Can you elaborate? Yeah, can elaborate yeah, can you explain on that. that? What's um, the what's the difference? Yeah. So like a follower is someone who pressed a button one time mm-hmm. and a fan is someone who like if you were to sell merch they would buy it constantly if, engaging they would exactly. like offer you they named their firstborn child after you i have like, a fan who named their dog after me <laughs> i'm not Wade? kidding no rudy oh. the name of their dog rudy, rudy. rudy. because yeah. of you crazy? yes purple? yeah and they, they, they sent they they sent Only me videos half, half purple half <laughs> of <laughs> their dog they're like i named this dog rudy because of you oh shit that's, and that's, that's cool that's a fan that's not a follower yeah. you know? right 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 like a follow up to the show exactly how do you find i have fans that have bought plane tickets to come see me play Damn. You know, like mm-hmm. right. fans that they're come putting from where their money, the yeah, m- yeah. money to come the see me play. Exactly. Bro, my concert ticket this time was ten dollars, mm-hmm. and they bought a plane ticket to buy, to to, to see the concert. concert. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. What's the uh, what's the? Uh, I mean, since we're we're going there, but what's uh? You just had your second concert, yeah, yeah. Seed. We we had a good time. El Cid, yes. You yeah. you obviously you know I I, I had a great time. There. You had a great time. What's uh? I, the, one of the craziest uh? Or what touched you the most? Like afterwards, like meeting your fans and stuff, what kind of spoke Which to you? Which I saw that you took your time to, you know, dude. I it, this concert, it was actually so much different than all the previous concerts. Like after I got off stage at all the previous concerts, like yeah, I had a couple like fan interactions, but this time, dude, I was like so overwhelmed with the amount of support that yeah. was coming up to me after. Like, really? yeah, it was hard like, to get you. Dude, you were it left was, and right. I, it was that's crazy. It's like, getting a lot of love dude, for yeah. real, and yeah, I've never really experienced that before, and. That just like reaffirms to me that I'm improving. I'm getting better at being on stage, being a performer, putting on a show. Mm. You know, and so this is where you need to be. This is where everybody. I need to be. This mm-hmm. is what I need to continue doing. So yeah. it, it it felt really good. That's yeah. dope. That's cool, man. Are we gonna see potentially? Uh, I would I would love grand. to do a oh, performance together for yeah, sure. Yeah. yeah, come out with the saxophone there. You know, that would be why like, not? That'd be, dude, sick. that'd be so crazy. Oh, yeah. So you guys have done songs. Yeah, we, we actually have released mm-hmm. one song together called Stranded. Stranded. Right? Yeah. Yes. Stranded. And we Which I've listened that was, to. I like that one. That song actually dropped the night of our last podcast. Yeah. I remember. Yeah. Yeah. Really? I remember. Yes. I remember yeah. yeah. Of our last I podcast, that, hey. that song came out. Are you plug in yeah. Stranded? Yeah. On, on this on podcast? That, on this podcast. Yeah. yeah. That's We wild. were actually trying to put that on, on the first reel, but due to like. Uh, oh, you suggested not to. Oh, I, want, to I just wanted people to see the purple hair story. Because oh. I no no no, no the but song there was another, yeah, cause cause we're, like we're gonna use or something? oh I, th- yeah there's a couple of my songs that I have that are set to Shit. YouTube content ID which is basically if YouTube detects that this song's being used all the royalties from that video come to me I don't have all my songs set to that but a couple of my bigger songs like mm. yeah that extra royalty check definitely helps support me sure so, yeah uh, mm-hmm. there's there's some songs that you know are completely copyright free and can't you whitelist channels. There it is, bro. Uh, I, I I actually don't know how to do that. 
Maybe it's just because we have different distributors. Yeah, I, I have a I have a distributor that I don't even know they, white list, yeah. black list, <laughs> red list. <laughs> white list is basically is, like bro, you give them permission to be able to use it copyright free. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, so you can provide them a list of like YouTube channels and say, hey, these YouTube channels can use my music without any consequences. Yeah. Mm. So like they're not going to get the royalty de- demonetized. Did you, you know? see that mm-hmm. today? Somebody used our audio. I saw that. And for a video. Mm-hmm. You guys Jerry's ha- voiceover. Yeah. W- w- what voiceover. audio is it? Uh, it was ba- on, on one of the podcasts. Uh, our last guest actually, uh, or actually not our last, but our, uh, one of our guests, he, he said some good stuff about boxing. And I guess somebody used that. I don't even know how to do that. Yeah, <laughs> that's pretty right. impressive. I, I don't just know. got the notification. Like, oh, t- sure. So yeah, we, you know, he he did his thing. It was like boxing is a sport where you know this and that, and it sounds really good. And this guy made another video with his voice, uh-huh. with that exact voiceover. Oh, so he he kind of just used your the audio. The audio from yeah. your clip. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Have you ever have you ever thought of making audios for people to reuse, like specific audios specifically like turning things for into people. sounds on TikTok? Yeah, no, uh, but I guess I mean, we have to. Start it is a market. About that it is a market. something. There's a thing know, for that. About it. Yeah, yeah. And I, he's know, I know people voice. that make sounds specifically for TikTok. Like they don't make songs, but they make sounds. They just like talk and say stupid things, and then people so that people it. reuse it, like. They'll, right, they'll right. say like, like on their TikToks. Uh-huh. I think I've seen that. Like, like, look at this thing that I did. Or like the 2023 season has come to an end, and then everyone's putting all their 2023 highlights to that. You know, like yeah. Mm-hmm. And, it and what makes people it they get royalties viral. for that? Or? I mean, I, if a lot of people use your sound and your sound is registered on TikTok, yes, mm-hmm. you are collecting royalties for the amount of videos that are used. It's not a lot of money. Yeah, oh, but like two dollars. I, mean, I mean, no, it's <laughs> it's not a lot of money per video, but, but it adds it up. Adds up. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Same yeah. thing with streaming royalties, like. Per stream, you're you're getting like like a third a, of a penny, a third of a cent. But mm-hmm. you know, a lot of thirds of a cents combined is that's a lot right. of money. You that's know? right. That's, that's true. Right. So it, Spe- it is a market. Yeah. Speaking yeah. of sound, uh, not not to get it off on a tangent, I want to come back to the whole like Mormon thing and okay. yeah, get a little <laughs> bit more. I'm, I want to know like why, what made you kind of leave? Like like was it music? Detach. <sighs> music had to do something with that. Or? Actually, no. Um, it was a lot of things. Too many wives to handle? or Yeah, I didn't want that many in-laws. Many. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. Um, I just... I realized that the... How do I describe it? The church is like kind of built on this idea of the spirit. And the spirit is the messenger, the link between you and God. It'll tell you what God wants you to know. And I realized that this whole time, what I thought was the spirit was my feeling loved and accepted. And then I realized that me trying to like obey God's commandments so that I could feel the spirit more was really me trying to be more obedient so that I could feel loved and accepted. And that caused a lot of like really toxic behaviors where I would like push myself way too hard to do everything I thought God wanted me to do. Mm. I would like drive myself crazy searching for the spirit and I would blame myself whenever I didn't feel loved. Yeah. You were searching for acceptance. Mm -hmm. And so when I realized that I was like, wait, if, if the only reason I believe this is true is because the spirit told me it was, Mm -hmm. and that's really just like my own emotions going on, then how do I know it's true? And so then I started looking at everything from like a logical, rational, I'm just going to look at data and see where I go from there. And it kind of slowly led me further and further away. Mm. Until I got to a point where I was like, I I don't believe this anymore. Mm. Was enough. that was that a uh, conflict with the uh, parents? Are your parents? Re- My parents are still mm-hmm. very active. How did they uh, take that? Shockingly well. Mm-hmm. Um, I released a song about me leaving. Leaving. Uh huh. And and they liked the song. They're like, you know what? <laughs> My uncle played it at our family reunion. Oh, shit. <laughs> He said, hey, and check this out. Yo. In his in spiritual the other message, Mormons. he uh-huh. played it, yeah. In and his talk- spiritual message? Uh-huh, talking about, like, toxic religiosity and how to, like, better... Which song was that? Misplaced Faith. Oh, Misplaced Faith. Uh, I'm the, the, I gotta listen. Yeah, yeah, I gotta I'm check, gonna that, check one that one out. Yeah, I wrote it from the perspective... I originally wrote it when I was still in the church, mm-hmm. and I wrote it as, a, as a, like, a Christian song mm-hmm. uh, from the perspective of Jonah. And in the, uh, one of the lines is, Throw Me in the Waves. And uh, then when I left the church, I changed the lyrics to better, to be like more honest with where I was right now. Mm-hmm. And like the premise is that, that if this is what I need to do, if this is what God's forcing me to do to go to heaven, then I'd rather be thrown in the proverbial waves. Mm. Mm-hmm. That's deep. I can see that. I can yeah. understand that. What That's, part yeah, of, it's what interesting. Part of Arizona are you from again? Uh, Queen Creek. Queen it's Creek. a little city. For some reason I was thinking about Coconut Creek. I'm like, isn't that Florida? <laughs> 
Yeah. I've never heard of that part of Arizona. You said it's, it's close by Phoenix. Yeah, it's, I know it's there's like Glendale. southeast of Phoenix, kind of by Gilbert Chandler. Chan- Mesa. I heard of Chandler. And his fans sure. are the type of fans when he says what city he's from, they're gonna find his address. Oh I, shit! They actually already. Have. Oh shit! <laughs> I've had fans show up at my doorstep once. It was terrifying. Oh wait. What? Yeah. What? What? Yeah. Random what happened? Asking what? for an autograph or what? I don't know. I woke up at six thirty in the morning. My mm-hmm. mom's like, "Hey, there's some people downstairs that want to see you." I go downstairs and they're gone. Six thirty in the morning. Yeah, I never saw their face. Yeah, that's what never learned weird. their names. Did they message you? No. That's Dang, weird. that's a little. Yeah. That's a little early. Like, Super. It, yeah. It, if I have fans, they, can they y'all slept, come yeah. later when and I wait, wake up? <laughs> yeah, wait till like eleven. At yeah, least. don't come at six. Wait, wait, wait. So, did the fans say, "Hey, I'm here to see Legrand"? They were or, like, "Hey, is Legrand here?" Okay, so that's definitely a fan because yeah. they would have said, "Hey, is Tom here?" If they were, if yeah. they weren't a fan, if they were known. Like yeah, I have no me. idea what they wanted from me. I was like so paranoid. The next they just wanted nights. to know you were there. Yeah, yeah I, I think was like, once like mom came out, out like, like, okay, rob me or something. Did uh, I like? Yeah, yeah. That yeah that, that's the things you got to watch out for. But um, well, how do you think they found you? or What? Um, did you post something? <laughs> no. Well, I think they found me from my business address, which was tied to my home address. But oh, uh, okay. we, we changed that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Might have to make that real quick. There. How many fans do you think you have, man? Um, Not followers, fans. Fans? Fans. Probably, like... I'm curious to see your answer, because I'll give my answer next. Uh, yeah, I was, I'm was. i asking you next, too. I guess it depends on wh- when you define them going from, like, the phase of being just, like, a guy who kind of likes the music to a fan. Mm-hmm. There are, like, probably a thousand people who... Maybe more. There's probably, like, 10,000 people who, if you, if you asked, are you a fan of LeGrand? They would say, yeah. Mm-hmm. But there's, like, 50 people who go on my live stream, like, every time I go live. And like, like I know, like their usernames, I recognize them. Like, so it kind of depends on how you. Sure, I would, I would I, say I would. I'm at pretty much the same. Like, those are the same numbers I was thinking. Like, ten thousand people. If you ask them, are you a Rudy Wade fan? Like, they yes. like your music. They like you. Yeah. But fifth, there's fifty. Like. I love Rudy Wade. Like, yeah, you know what yeah. I'm saying? I'm like, gonna name my dog after I, him. Yeah, like, like, there's yes, like 50 yes. people who like yes. okay. know off the top of their head where my mom went to high school. For oh, sure. Shit. Yeah, that's pretty hardcore though. Yeah, they do yeah. their research. No, you guys gotta have more fans. For no, sure. No, like, die but like hearts. you said, yeah, there's a yeah. range yeah. there on the definition. And it, it's, it's surprisingly it narrows down quite a lot. Mm-hmm. Like you'd be shocked at how fast it does. Like for sure, my merch yeah. sales are like I get I got like 20 merch sales. Even though I have three hundred thousand monthly listeners on Spotify, bro. Mm. Honestly, monthly listeners are the most. I I would say are the most like lying metric that there is the because second mm. most after TikTok followers. TikTok followers are a very lying. <laughs> TikTok metric. followers are nothing. so monthly listeners. I believe to be a lying metric because how you get a monthly listener is somebody has to listen to your music one time within the month to count as a monthly listener. So if they just if. Their songs were on autoplay. Do they auto count play? for you the following month? No. Yeah. If, if they don't listen to you that month, they're gone. They're gone. So, mm-hmm. basically, <laughs> if somebody has stuff on autoplay. I see why you feel that way. If, mm-hmm. they, if, they, if they have your music on autoplay, or not your music, they just have a playlist on autoplay, and, and then you come up, on. they count as a monthly listener, they might not even know who you are. But you mm-hmm. still get paid on that, right? Yeah, you get paid on it, but... Like, obviously, but obviously, but you, you, want, you guys yeah. want... Yeah, you want the for, consistency. To, yeah. to mm-hmm. be considered a fan... I wouldn't say monthly listeners have anything to do with fans, mm-hmm. but obviously like the more monthly listener ha- you have, the more money you're making mm-hmm. right. for yeah. sure. But for fans, I would, I would say monthly listeners don't tell you at all how many fans somebody has. Damn. Yeah, so sure. you guys both said 10,000, but really like 50, 50 fans. So let me ask you a question. Would fans. you rather have monthly Listeners or people that show up to the concert, they're gonna people that show up because right, let me tell you, you, something you make sure. a bigger bag well, right there, right? Yeah. Something if you have 20,000 people that stream your song every single day and you have 100 songs and they all stream all 100 songs every single day, mm-hmm. that's better than like 200,000 people streaming your song once. And if 20,000 people are gonna buy your concert tickets mm-hmm. or you do a concert, that's like $500,000 a night. There like it is. That's that's if where you're selling like that's yeah. where the money's at. So it's like two point so five. So if you have people that kind of fuck with you, mm-hmm. they're not really gonna pop out. Like how many tickets would you how if if you had twenty thousand people come to your concert, how much would the ticket have to be for you to make five hundred thousand? Do you have a calculator? Five hundred thousand divided by divided by twenty thousand. We're looking at twenty five bucks per twenty five dollar tickets. If you have twenty thousand people, you're making five hundred grand. Mm-hmm. So I'd rather have yeah. super yeah, fans than sure. monthly listeners. Hell yeah. Mm-hmm. 
And guess what? If you're if you're having twenty thousand people come to a venue, mm-hmm. tickets ain't twenty five, buddy. Tickets yeah. are at least fifty. 50. Mm-hmm. At least. Not only that, but you'll get booked again for another exactly. show. And then you'll yeah. do it in a different city. Yeah, and then you'll do sure. it in a different city. Right. You just repeat yeah, the cycle. Exactly. And the other thing is I feel like having like a weak fan is almost is sometimes worse than having no I agree. Fan. I agree. Like when one of my biggest songs weak first dropped. Fan W E A K weak. Yes. No, yeah, like like, like not like strong. A fan that gotcha. doesn't love you. Yeah. yeah. Like you for example, you said it's worse. It's, in I, some cases, it can be worse than having nothing. Because mm. uh, yeah. when one of my songs dropped, there was a single person. Mm-hmm. Like I, I went onto this guy's Spotify, Spotify profile because you can see it in your Spotify for artists yeah. and saw this playlist. It has one person who made it, and that's the only person who listens to it. Mm-hmm. In 24 hours, listened to the song 400 times. Could you imagine what my retention would be on the song? Like if you watch a video twice, you get 200% watch time for their retention, and that's crazy for an algorithm. I'd be at like four thousand percent. Like, could you imagine what that would do for me? In but then Spotify's there's a algorithm? bunch of people that you know they listen to it once and they skip it in ten seconds, and that's a that's bad mm-hmm. for the algorithm. So if I know? could cut out all of the people that only watch that only listen to it once and then don't like it, my algorithm would be absolutely cracked. And is it is it the same algorithm throughout these platforms? Is it the measurement? No, the the, pl- the, the algorithm one? is different per platform. platform. So every Spot- platform has their own. Spotify. What's your guys' favorite platform? Spotify. Spotify. That's the platform Spotify. where we get paid. I'm YouTube, but Spotify pays way more. I, yeah. Sorry, I saw, I saw on YouTube you have about a hundred thousand subscribers. I got two accounts. One is for Shorts, so it doesn't make as much money, but it has more followers. It has three hundred fifty thousand. Gotcha. And gotcha. then the main one has a hundred k. So when you started out, were you mostly YouTube? No, actually, I started on TikTok, and then when I decided I was going to like take things seriously, I got one of those content schedulers, mm-hmm. and so I automatically started throwing shit at uh, Instagram and YouTube Shorts, mm-hmm. and then um, I never got any success in any other platform but TikTok until um, I had a collab with this artist named CG5, and my YouTube Shorts went from 500 subscribers to 350,000 in like... Like a month, I think. Whoa! Yeah, you need to do a collab with him on TikTok. <laughs> with <laughs> you get him on the pod. With CG5. Yeah. Yes. Yo, b- both. Yeah. Fuck it. We'll take yeah. you all. <laughs> take you <laughs> Major collab. Yeah. That'd be cool. Yeah. That, uh, okay. So, so yours is YouTube. Because we, we post, we well, post our short yeah. videos on TikTok, but we don't really keep track of the, you know. But I know. I hear, I hear TikTok is like how TikTok you can is really good, build. but I honestly think that TikTok, it's like weird because. I think the more you actively use TikTok and use all the features on TikTok, mm-hmm. the more they push you. So if you're just like posting and you're never on it, I think they don't like you really as much. They don't yeah. fuck with yeah, you. Yeah, I, I think. Yeah. Oh, you're I, not showing so us that much. Yeah, I yeah. I think that like if you live stream on TikTok, if you watch videos, you engage with other people's content, mm-hmm. then they start to like you and they start to push your videos out. But if you if you're just posting and then hopping off, what do you think about that? Do you think that's fair? Like, is I that think a good that's move like, on TikTok. I think that's like the the whole. Thing where you know how they they had like the scandals where they were collecting data like mm-hmm. from China. I think they you know the more data that you give them, the, the more. more they like you. So they want to keep you on the app. So the more you're on the app, <laughs> they try to suck you in. Yeah. Sounds like China. Interesting. For yeah. Sure. yeah, I didn't know that. So why why Spotify for you, Rudy? Well, Spotify is definitely my biggest platform. That's you know where I get the most streams, where I make the most money, um, and it's the the platform where I'm most consistent on i release a new song every week right now i'm mm. i'm i'm challenging myself for the rest of 2024 to drop a song every week i got a question um outside of that but how do we get marvick on spotify for the podcast yeah you need to like get our a, audio. you need to find That's a distributor easy. so there's you just hire bryce <laughs> <laughs> pretty, pretty much <laughs> easy peasy <laughs> bryce is like yeah <laughs> yeah I, you know answer. what i kind of want to change my answer i feel like asking sorry you can't change it <laughs> oh dang it okay see you later guys uh <laughs> I think asking me what my favorite algorithm is is like asking someone like what their favorite type of wood is to build a fire. You can't just have like a log. You need you need kindling. You need like small sticks, and then you need like a big old log. Mm-hmm. And I think TikTok is like the most kindling kindling there is. Like okay. I, I think, think if you have something like blow analogy. up on TikTok, like you're make like TikTok doesn't pay you directly, but if you have something blow up on TikTok and you have a proper funnel. The, yeah. the the traction it that can you lead get to from, from like exactly. the money that you make from a, something blowing up on TikTok is so much bigger than like Instagram I or remember, YouTube. Um, our one of our guests, uh, her name's uh, Kimberly Kim. Mm-hmm. She 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 mentioned that too. Like she said, don't sleep 
on the power of TikTok. For sure. Do she not. has a, she sells candy, but she used TikTok, you know, to gain that. Uh-huh. And TikTok didn't pay her anything, fans. but the candy sales did because yeah. her video got a lot mm-hmm. of views. Yep. Mm-hmm. And that's the thing. I just think like, like you need just in the same way that you need like different types of wood to build a fire. You need like TikTok to get the fire going and then you need to spread it from TikTok to then like YouTube and then to Instagram right, and then sense. you get like, like everything else like lit what, up. What, what we're about to do right now, you know, how, we, how you mentioned, okay, like we got this, but we need the insurance mm-hmm. to turn this into monetize. Exactly. Yeah. 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 So, I mean, what, what, and I guess we can, I know you guys had questions about insurance for us yeah. earlier, yeah, for but sure. yes. <laughs> Mar- so Marvick Productions, um, well, let him ask the question. Bro. Yeah, well, hold on. Let, hold on, let, on, let on, us on, ask little, the question. Yeah. A little bit more context. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not going to ask okay. the question for you, but. You know, Marvick Productions, Legrand, has really been just a fun project for us. Mm-hmm. Like, Rudy knows more about this, but... It's an investment that's longevity, that we're, it's going to mm-hmm. grow within time, uh, but it's not something that we're profiting from. You know, this right. is something that we... It's are, a passion project. Yeah, and we're putting our own money to, to, to fund it. We it, fund the podcast. I yeah, guess. it's a passion okay. project, and, and really, personally, I didn't really have any intention to, like, start making money off of it. It was just more for fun. Like, we mm-hmm. have the right people around us. We obviously love to talk and, you know, let's see if people like what we say. We don't fucking know, right? We just <laughs> yeah. gotta, we just gotta right. you know, take that risk there. But you get blocked on the <laughs> we get We lose a follower because we talked about abortion. It is what it is, right? I mean, it's 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 life. But yeah, yeah now you know, you, what we're... I, I, guess, I, guess, I guess you definitely, you learn, like, and, and you, you know, you can't win without risk taking, right? right? So... Take no, you. no, fu- like we're we're, we're going we're, all in. Yeah, like we're all we're, for we're it. here. We're, all for we're here for the risk. This is definitely. So this is nothing mm-hmm. personally to me. The risk, and I use quote. This is not even a risk for, for sure. Me, for sure, personally, like. But I think the more you risk, the more you get rewarded. But it it is also you know that take that with a grain of salt because you you don't want you don't want to go to Vegas and put your net worth down. Self salt. <laughs> no, I'm saying you don't you don't want to. You get it. You I don't do you don't want to go to Vegas and put your net worth on on black yeah, and then, yeah, yeah. you know like that's it's, a dumb it's, risk it's like but yeah, 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 yeah. calculated risks like that's mm-hmm. that's really how you get you gain an edge in right, life right right like, yeah I I would I would say like I w- I'm not I would not be where I am right now if I didn't take the risk to move in with John and you know learn music with him mm-hmm. that was gotcha. a big risk I was planning to go to college <clears throat> then I went with John Skirt. So yeah, John is better. John professor. University, exactly. Right. John, right. Right. Yeah. John University. Yeah. So yeah, now we're gonna though. we're having um. So we're we're gonna go to Vegas next week, and we're mm-hmm. actually doing. You're putting your net worth on black. black. We're putting <laughs> our net worth on black, <laughs> and uh, we're gonna win. That's for sure. But no, we're gonna have. It's gonna be our biggest opportunity where we've had we've had two opportunities so far to sponsor boxers. Okay. And uh, this is gonna be so. Marvick is gonna sponsor a boxer. Yeah. Yes. Which boxer? Uh, Jamel Herring is his name. Okay. Semper Fi is his nickname. Uh, former world champion. Former world champion. He's uh, fighting in so Australia. As a sponsor, what do you get? Great question. Great so, question. Uh, technically, contracts. We can we can talk about it, but so. It, it, so it, there's there's a contract in place, you know. So an NDA. Uh, there is, but mm-hmm. it, the truth is, w- we can talk about it. We'll okay. just put it that way. So. Um, every sponsorship is different. That's for sure. And that's something we've been learning as we've right. been going, you know, uh, through with these things. But this one is um, for sure our favorite so far. Like, so, um, Just based on the contract. Yeah. So what we're expecting is, uh, we're going to go to Vegas. We're going to film a podcast like this with Jamel. That's the first thing we get access to his gym. We get to see him in training camp. Uh, which other fa- other big boxers are going to be there as well? So it's going to be an opportunity oh, for us to network with them and just you possibly know. sponsor other boxers, possibly, 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 and also just put the brand up there. You or know, are, are you production. are you in more of an exclusive like you're only sponsoring him? Uh, as of now, mm-hmm. it's it's only him. But are we open to sponsoring others? Absolutely. Okay. So you're not wrong. The only thing is that again, for us, Marvel Productions locked into only sponsoring him. No, no, okay, no, 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 right. no, no. That wouldn't that wouldn't make sense for us or even yeah. them. Like they, right. they mo- boxers have. I'm sh- I'm sure you've Mul- seen a yeah, boxer fight. They have multiple sponsors. You know all the mm-hmm. names. Yeah, yeah. It's it's for everybody, right? So networking will be big. So we're excited to meet um, whoever's going to be. You saw Devin is there right now. Yeah, yeah. Devin Haney. Uh, who's so going to be fighting Ryan Garcia next in uh, oh. April twentieth. So training camp there. So podcast is one. We get exposed to the to the gym. 
Um, I think the biggest one is that he is agreeing to film separate content in, in addition to the podcast with us that he will be posting on his page twice per week for three months. Oh, so that's 24 reels, 24 ads that we have an opportunity to promote our life insurance company. Okay. So we're actually, so is he, is, is FFL sponsoring or is it Marvel? So it's, it's excellence life group that is going to sponsor that and Marvic production. So excellence life group is my agency. You saw in the golf tournament, you saw FFL excellence and then you saw Marvic. So it's like a dual sponsorship. It's a dual. Same thing as the golf. Yeah. Because again, it it goes back to this Marvic productions. How can we benefit from this? You know, yes. How can we fund or, Turn this into an opportunity where we could gain profit. <laughs> Marvel production production doesn't produce income. Not yet. Not well, yet. Not once yet. you get monetized on YouTube, yes. then, right. then you will start to. But, make, but right. we're not there yet, right? So, so we how, gotta how have far a away are you from that? I don't even know. I want to say this. this you need to have a thousand subscribers and forty thousand watch hours, I believe. That's the I, I couldn't. I'm not yeah. even yeah. pretending. Forty thousand, I think, on shorts. Five thousand for normal YouTube. Oh, 5,000. Well, there it is. Those are the numbers. Um. So Marvick Productions doesn't produce income right now. You know, we're not mm-hmm. there yet. But yeah, we, yeah. So how can we do something where we could turn it into yeah. profit, where we could potentially, you know, invest more into our business? That's where the insurance comes into place. So the insurance the Jump. insurance company is how you make your money. Yeah. And you eventually want the insurance to fund the podcast to the point where the podcast Well, right now we're building the money. brand because the brand's going to be in this boxers fighters, right? I yeah. want people, we're, we want people to get familiarized with the brand Marvel productions, but we also got to eat. So how For do sure. we, how do we turn this into money? Right? So your life insurance is, you're going to make your money there. Right. Because uh, Jamel Herring, he's an, uh, he's also a uh, ex veteran. Military veteran. He's a veteran. Okay. He's an ex marine. Um, ex-marine. he's got a very loyal fan base. He's got about like seventy thousand followers on IG, and he's got real fans. We, we sure. I, mm-hmm. I love that we touched on that, but you know, he's he's a real famous boxer. You know, and um, he believes in life insurance, and he's just a cool dude. And um, shout out to Jerry. You know, who's making all this stuff happen. He was one of our guests, and yep. uh, we're just really excited because. You know, that's how we're viewing this, where Marvic Productions is getting us in the door, mm-hmm. and then we're going to take advantage of, you know, Excellence Life Group and promote that. And like, Hey, like, w- you know, we're not just a podcast. We're actual insurance brokers that you can benefit from, um, you know, yeah, long for term. Sure. Now, if you ask me about so, our vision is, like, I, I also, for Marvic Productions, is I also eventually want to invest into, like, cameras and mics and do all that are by ourselves have our own studio have our own studio Mm -hmm. open up a studio for people that want to do this we have an editing team in the philippines like so if you want to have your own podcast you you hire you and then they come to your studio and they correct correct yeah we know the insurance Uh, companies for that so for the sponsorship you are doing one sponsorship that you know is going to be profitable and then the other one is probably going to be a net loss but it's going to help push the marvic brand well look I, I wouldn't consider a net loss because well what do you what do you mean yeah what, like like marvic productions isn't monetized right now right. marvic productions is not making money at no. this particular moment in time right so the sponsorship of marvic productions you know that it's gonna be negative right now mm-hmm. but it's like a future investment yeah yeah it's exactly what it is because yeah. we we've done i mean <laughs> I'll, I'll i'll keep it uh i won't reveal the exact numbers but what we're paying for this sponsorship it, we we've paid more before mm-hmm. and, and gotten less. Right. So mm-hmm. it's all been a, a, a long term play for us, where we've had conversations on the phone, where I've been like, I I think he's sometimes felt like you know it, Look, it didn't I, really work out and it wasn't you know where's the money and all that, but it's it's not about the money right, right. now. It's it, not. It's, it's about not. the growth. It's mm-hmm. about branding. It's what mm-hmm. he's saying. It's about the marketing and people getting familiar with us and what we do and mm-hmm. the money's gonna come. You know? so, so look, man. Uh, that there was, and this is very. Again, I, I touched on this last time, but it's very important to have a a, a good partnership, right? Because there's times wow. where I kind of fell down on myself, like, damn. We actually what? just spoke about this in the yeah, car. Yeah, we, like how Kanye like, needs his Jay Z. Hey, yeah, how Kanye right. needs his Jay Z. There it is, bro. Know? We're like LeBron and exactly. uh, and, and uh, D Wade, Stefan, okay. okay, and Thompson. So who's LeBron? Kobe who's D Wade? <laughs> hey, you know what I'm saying. Now. Um, LeBron, but check it out, man. The, the, <laughs> okay, gotcha. the, there was times where I was kind of like, man, you know what, bro? Like, I feel like we just kind of threw away some money there. 
But again, it's good to have. And a it hurt. Part- yeah, it so hurt. it hurt. But I had a partner that you know kind of cleaned up my I thinking. Where it was like he didn't hype me up, but he corrected my thinking in a sense where it was like, hey, look, you got to look at it as an investment. It's true because yeah, and look at everything that's coming now because of that. What you if we? Spend. What if we didn't take that risk or put that money up? Exactly. We wouldn't be where we're at today. True. We wouldn't have the connections that we made today. You go. Oh. You got to go negative for a while before you go positive. Yeah, it's, yeah, good. and that and that's some real shit that a lot of people going into business. They want to see the results about, and the now. Yeah, but you know? it's not like that. It's, it's really not. It's not like that. And whenever it is like that, it's not real. It's a facade. Yeah, it's right. not. It's not self sufficient. We want some. It's kind of like you were saying. Like, would I rather have, um, you know, five hundred thousand followers, or you know what I'm saying? We want that long term yeah, shit. We right. want. We want some real. Where you people know, really fuck with us, you know, not yeah. just because uh, we got a following. But because they love our platform and what they can they say, they like watching it. You know, like you, you, you said it, bro. Cat Williams. You know, when he went into the the Shay Shay show, Cat. I don't know if you guys saw that interview or not. Mm-hmm. Are you familiar with Cat Williams, comedian? No, not at all. Check it out, man. But uh, he, you know, he's been in the game for for a while. But he chose Shannon Sharp's podcast for him to speak out. Shout he, out to the Denver Broncos, Shannon Sharp. Yeah, I don't know about the Broncos. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, but um, long story short, what happened? He, he told Shannon Sharp, "Look, I could have gone anywhere else, but I chose you. Why? Because you let me. You let. I know I can say what I want to say here. Mm-hmm. You know, I could be my side. I could be free. Yeah. So that's what we want people to, you know, feel comfortable when you guys come on here. Say whatever you want to say. Don't don't worry about the negativity or what people or the black la- the backlash. You know, just be you. But um, <clears throat> Marvick Productions, man. You know." The way so is Marvick up. Productions going to be uh, <laughs> sponsoring another TYTV golf event? Soon? Yes, that's that's in yeah. the works. Okay, really? so yeah. touching on that, man. Um, the way, so the way, the price? if Tyler ever gets it going, right? Yeah, we're still waiting yeah, for that Ty, video to drop. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Put a little pressure on Ty. Ty has been saying for the longest, hey, that. No, nah, no, nah, we know Ty way. is busy. He's no, he, <laughs> he's going to get it going. Don't worry. Uh, no, no, I'm not worried. I, I know yeah. he has another. So, golf if, if you're going to sponsor another one of those events, what would be the cash prize for the whole one? Ah, uh, well, that's a good question. I mean, we got to talk to Ty. Hundred thousand. I'll take another driver <laughs> shot. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the truth is, we ain't paying it. it. The money's there, but it's it's all it's all insurance. Yeah, it yeah, because we pay the insurance company. So if someone does hit that, it's really not coming out of our pocket. Yeah, the insurance company <laughs> so, pays that. <laughs> I'm just I'm just being like, honest. Tournament I'll, insurance. Feel free to take a swing. Yeah. Please, I'll take a swing yeah. on my own. Fucking, you know, mm-hmm. if I hit it, like you know, <laughs> then um, we get an amp. Yeah. <laughs> but look, yeah. man. Um. Marvick Productions, the way I see it, the vision, I, I look at Marvick Productions like one of, do you guys, I don't know, back in the days, like in school, you guys would do like the little um, web. Um, the Venn diagram? or Yeah, the like web map? Yeah, the web map. Uh-huh. Yeah. So th- this is the way I view it. Marvick Productions in the middle, and then one of my little web legs, you know, we got the TY, the Marvick Golf. We got Marvick Boxing. We got Marvick Merch. We could sponsor so you guys. So you guys, guys kind of want to be in the sports no. Area? Would you ever want to sponsor? We want to be there. Uh, we already are, mm-hmm. but we want we want to be everywhere. Would you ever yeah. want to sponsor a musician or a concert? Yeah, we, I would sponsor. So you what? Guys. What? What would? What if we want? If we were going to be like, okay, Marvick Productions is going to sponsor our concert. <laughs> mm-hmm. What? What would that entail? Would you think? That's a great question, and I think truthfully, I if don't, I don't personally know too much about that, it was something I would have to learn more about. I don't know. Like, the concert space. Yeah, I, like I think what, it's what, something what we would have to like. discuss privately, number mm-hmm. one. And For I sure. think, obviously, as long as it... <laughs> Rudy's out here making business plays. Yeah. Oh, no, yeah. I love it. I love it. But, you <laughs> because know, look, that's just how, that's who I am. Look, bro, He's no, no, but so look, to, to be real man. with you, when we went to your concert as businessman here, you know, we're looking at it. And I, I told Mar, like, yo, like, this kid, I I'm, I feel like I'm looking at a, at a future star right here. I you know, like, it. you're you're up on stage. You're you're getting the fans engaged. Uh, you got good vocals, which what I told Marlon was like, look, man, it's hard... It's different when you hear somebody live and when you just listen to their music, you know, on YouTube and all that, because that's where the engineering goes to work. I feel like when people voice. see you live, they become a believer. Right. When previously, like, they're like, oh, yeah, he's cool. But, like, when you see him live, you're like, oh, this is what oh, he's but, doing. But like, that shit ain't easy uh, either, man. To, someone, to hit those notes with that band, that's not seeing easy. Seeing someone not. live as, as a fan, uh, on the other side, you guys are the performers, but as the audience, I think personally for me, seeing someone live, like seeing you, it revealed to me your passion and your confidence and, and 
really like how badly you want this. Mm -hmm. I think sure. that's what it does. That definitely. And that's what I, that's kind of what I was saying. Like it makes the fans believe. Mm -hmm. Like they mm -hmm. see that on stage and they're like, "Whoa, this yeah. is my artist yeah, that's, right that's here. This fact. kid's going all out. Like mm -hmm. he, you know, he's doing his thing and and and, and he's got the energy and is like, "Yeah, exactly. You're making yep. me like wanna, you know, fuck with you more." Yeah. Mm -hmm. that's, you know? that's such a thing. And it really like how how much time and energy you put in and how much thought you put in makes such a big difference. And Dude, I've like right. never met a person who like goes as full tilt full time as Rudy over here. Like, Dude, I'm telling you right now, what he just said, I cannot resonate with it more. The time, the the thought that you put in before you put on the show mm -hmm. is so important, dude. Because I, all the stuff that I said on on stage, it was all scripted. I I wrote that in my notepad. I, I literally could show you. I I wrote everything I was gonna say mm -hmm. before the show. Mm -hmm. so and then when I went up yeah. there, I believe it. I just executed You're what I had. You're a professional is what right. it is. You know? You're a professional because mm -hmm. comedians, we're talking about comedians earlier. Mm -hmm. I, I've studied, you know, a lot of them and and ev every, everything. everything from all the little laughs that you think and the impromptu and that one joke. It's all that scripted. It's all scripted. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And it's just they're fucking professionals and they make you feel like. It's like, off like the you fly. Would, exactly. Like exactly. you wouldn't know. Nobody that. in the crowd probably knows that everything that i said on stage was written mm -hmm. i didn't make up a single thing on the fly i just rehearsed it that's how you, you know? know you're good because so, when people can't tell yeah not only that man but the way you perform like i, I believe that the way you perform whether there's five people there 10 people there or 30 bro every big artist point. performs for 40 yeah. people at a bar right right so at what some I, what point I'm, in their career that's are you I'm gonna saying, rock man. out for forty, or are you gonna mm. go well, up there and you'll, you'll be surprised, man? There's some people that change their their whole energy changes when they perform when they only see five, ten people there, right? Can't but do that, that. that mm -hmm. exactly. So that's what shows us. Okay, he's a professional. You know, like whether there's ten people here, forty, fifty, sixty, he was still gonna give that same performance. Yeah, regardless. You feel me? So I like that. Um, what, what did you want to ask us about the insurance or you guys were like, I feel like I got so much information. I don't even remember what my question <laughs> was anymore. I well, just, what was it? He was look, like, man, I, I seek to be discomfortable. <laughs> seek to be uncomfortable. Yeah. yeah let me get this what pillow is, out of here. Seek what what, is, what is, yeah. what is seek discomfort? It's my favorite YouTuber. Uh, oh, he, they, he's a, a YouTuber. Uh, their, their YouTube channel is called yes theory. And I, Sounds familiar. uh, they're the guys that did bungee jumping with Will Smith on the, over the Grand oh, Canyon. Oh, I've heard mm -hmm. of that. Uh, but okay. I, yeah. No, basically, I am five of six kids, mm -hmm. which means my whole life was raised on just hand-me-downs after hand-me-downs. Yeah. And I got some money from going viral on the internet and realized, hey, I need to, like, maintain my image and care about what I wear. So I'm like, I'm just going to buy a bunch of clothes that look nice. And so yeah. I just well, bought a shit ton of So why, why, yes do, you like, why do you like Yes Theory? What, what, it, what, um, what is their channel? I actually have no idea. Uh, they're, like, how do I describe it? They do silly stuff with strangers. That's kind of the genre they were in for a long time. But it's they, they find a way to make it more profound than that. I don't know. They, the The idea of yes theory mm -hmm. is that you would be shocked at the things people would say yes to if you were to only ask. Oh, I think right. I've, I've seen... Mm. I've seen Will like Smith that. talk about that too, I think. Like yeah. they go up to people and they ask them, hey, you want to skydive? Yeah. Okay. They'll like, like go on a Tinder date and be like, hey, you want to go to Germany mm -hmm. and go scuba diving or something? That's like, crazy. And and the crazy adventures they can go on, and the way they prove that stranger danger is like kind of fake news, mm -hmm. uh, is it was just really inspiring. Helped me get out of my shell a lot in high school, and now I just like to have this stuff as a reminder to I seek like discomfort that and, yeah. that just and just means growth. Open yourself mm -hmm. up a little bit more. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Well, one of these days, bro, you're going to have a shirt that says Marvick Productions. <laughs> Marvick? Hey, I'll wear one right now. Yeah. <laughs> I'll wear Don't one worry, right bro. now. We, we, got some merch. we got some merch. Wait, when, when is the merch dropping? Uh, we we're working. We on ain't something. got no merch dropping. That's not even. <laughs> <laughs> no, but, but we got something cooking. But for this event that we got, next I, week, I saw. I saw you guys had uh the the, the golf, golf shirts. Tees. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Golf now we're tees. Like we're making our own shit, but like nothing. Maybe like I'll that have to yet. play in the TYTV Championship under Marvick. You? Yeah. Oh wait, actually, <laughs> yeah. speaking of merch, you guys are gonna love this. I don't know if the camera can see. I'm gonna pull my feet up. Here. Right? Yeah, yeah, you're go good right here. I didn't realize it when I designed these, but I never designed. 
the left shoe or the right shoe. Mm. <laughs> so, <laughs> so just, one is just, just blank. Yeah, uh, I didn't. I didn't we hadn't that. even. Are, are you? Li- is that? Is this product it. live on your website? I I fixed it, so now these are limited edition. Okay, it's <laughs> funny that creative. you did that because, like, uh, lately, not to take thunder away from that, which I do like them, by the way. Oh, thank you. Um, I, you probably follow the guy. I don't know, but there's a guy, Marco. Do you know who Marco is? Marco. Check him out on YouTube. Man. Is that his only? That's it. Just Marco. M A R two K's O, and he's uh, anybody. Marco? No, no, no. Nope. Marco's dope. So I've been. Um, so part of my my work with life insurance is um, that I'm I'm on call all the time, and I'm literally just waiting for a phone call from a client. I'll take. Yeah. Can I buy some life insurance? Yeah, exactly. Like, exactly. That's what I'm waiting for. As I'm waiting, I'm just like YouTubing ran- random shit, whatever. Call in one day, don't worry. And uh, <laughs> and this guy Marco, <laughs> check him out. He's brilliant. He's really creative. He's really famous. He does just that. Where he, I don't think. Did you do that? Like, how'd you do that? Actually, was that I found you didn't like freehand a freehand that. No, no, no. actually, I when I was a missionary, I learned how to graphic design to make invitations to activities. So like a three D printer type of thing. Or how'd you um, do, how'd you get it on? No. There? There's like a print on demand. There's a print on demand service. Basically, you just send them a graphic design and then they throw it on a shoe and then print mm. it whenever anyone orders it. So this guy actually draws everything himself. So he does one of ones. One of ones, yes. Oh, Customized, yeah. f- sick. That like, would be so dude, one sick. Of, one, I actually have a a company yeah, making one. me a whole one of, of a yeah, whole one of one outfit for my next music video. That's dope. That's dope. That'd be crazy. Dude. Hey, by yeah. the way, man, we never got those shirts. Dude, I got you. I, I tried to get them to you <laughs> from the concert. Uh, the concert shirts. Concert oh, okay. shirts. I, try, I tried to get I tried to get them to you guys, but I couldn't find you again yeah. after. I was getting pulled around so much. No, nah, you're, you're good. But I, I definitely got you, bro. Don't worry. Sure, for sure. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, Marco, he's a, he's a cool cat. He's um, very creative. And when you did that, I was like, I'm about happy accident over here. Yeah, yeah you know, Nike got down on these I honestly two. like it better <laughs> that it's <laughs> just one. I kind of, I might switch it back. To just one shoe? Kind of sick. I, well, I think you got creative. too excited different. with just one and you no, just, forgot just forgot about the other one. I thought it would like copy it over to the second one. Oh, you okay. had to like go to the next page and see there was a left <laughs> shoe and I never did. <laughs> So yeah. when you got it, what was your reaction? I was like, you gotta be fucking kidding me. <laughs> <laughs> hey, but, not, but now they're limited editions, and right? Now they're limited editions. How much they're, did you pay for that? They're probably um, worth more now. Like 65 bucks. That's not bad. That's actually for shoes. How, how much are they on your site right now? shoes, that's actually uh, really a deal. Lim- yeah. Limited they're, edition. I think they, oh, wait, the limited edition. I, I switched it back. So this is, this is the only pair in the world that's going to be like this. Well, are you going to uh-huh. sign it? I, maybe you should sign. I it. should sign yeah, it and yeah. then sell Gift it to the Marvel production. How much? 125? No, wait, no. I think they're... I think I pay out of my pocket like forty five bucks, and then I sell them for sixty five. Okay, so so, so you you've only paid forty five dollars to get those shoes. I think so. Like custom yeah. shoes. These custom yeah, limited edition anti war crimes shoes. Yeah, that's sick, bro. Yeah, Legrand, uh, man, because uh, I know we're running out of time here, but uh, I wanted to ask you, man, as an artist, uh, how, oh, how do you want to be defined? How do I want to be defined? Mm-hmm. Like when when you get this new listeners, like well, what what is it that you would like for them to know about you? I want them to know. That's a kind of hard question to answer. I want them to know that I play the saxophone Mm -hmm. and that they'll probably like my music. Mm -hmm. I like the confidence. (laughs) Thank you. Yeah. I've been doing it a long time. Yeah. yeah. And you believe in yourself and you know, you have a unique sound. You're saying like pop with jazz. Is that pop with jazz? It's we got to take you to Santa Monica, bro. At the, um, <laughs> Why not? You know what I'm talking about? What, what is that? Uh, you talking about um, the promenade? There? The pier? Are you talking about Venice, the boardwalk? No, 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 not not even that. Oh, um, the promenade. Yeah, the promenade. You're right, yeah, 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 bro. There's What's a lot the of people that perform play. out there. Yeah. Oh, it's like doing busking. Yeah, we should do something like, like that, man. Street performer. Yeah. Just like, just street perform. I'm down. I'm, I'm down. I've actually wanted to learn how to use a loop pedal for a long time now. Have you guys ever done that? Have no. you guys ever been there? I'm I've, what what um. You've never thought about. There's not a lot of street performing when the streets are 120 degrees outside. In no yeah, one walks down the that's street. That's fair. That's fair. So that's fair. I just <laughs> honestly never thought about it. Well, look, I I've think seen I you do your YouTube videos where you go around and like, hey, have you ever heard of the song? Mm-hmm. And I think that's like some cool shit. Like, yeah. catchy. Mm-hmm. It's fun. It's it's really high effort for, and it doesn't really yield the best return. So I haven't done it in a long oh. time, but it definitely. It was cool hey, to see that. I, I thought you were going to say stage, that was scripted. We build too. a stage on the back of a pickup truck, and then we park it. Have like a random side of the road concert and shoot a hell of a ton of content. 
That's true. That, Look, man. that would be a good time. That well, would be... on some real shit, what, he, what he's saying. Uh, you should try so it out. Promenade on Santa Monica. A lot of, it's a nice place. Um, mm-hmm. There's a lot of stores, lot of a lot of traffic. Mm-hmm. And you do see a lot of street performers. You know, yeah. you have the, the, dancers, the dancers, the singers, the, mm-hmm. the musicians. You should try it out, man, just so you can shoot content like that. Definitely. I, you know? I actually never thought of it in even in like a content Come on, sense. dog. I don't got. I actually, this is why hey. I know somebody. <laughs> I don't got uh, no degree in marketing. I know man, somebody I know a thing or two. who lives Marvin. in New Orleans <laughs> and uh-huh. he does street performing content on TikTok mm-hmm. and he goes crazy viral. It's just videos of him performing on the street and then, you know, the people are getting into it and whatnot. Right. But I, I'm, I'm sure if we did well, videos yeah, like that too. What's the downside to that? Nothing. Right? Nothing. What, what, just, you guys have, you have a good voice. Um, there's a lot in Houston. There's a lot in LA here. Look, like, check it out, man. Right Australia. now that you're here, you should be Con- I, I don't follow you on Instagram, but I'll make sure I will. I don't know if you've been doing it or not, but posting what you're doing. Stories. 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 I need to do more stories. Because, look, man, you got you got people from Arizona right now that probably never left Arizona. They don't know what L.A. is like. But yeah. they see you and they Yeah, they it's inspired. good It's good to show where you're going, for sure. That's don't true. post your location when you're there at that post time. It post it after you leave. Shit after. Yeah. Post it after. But I still don't think LeGrand has uh, enemies like Pop Smoke or anything. Well, I mean, like he that. has fans that show up at his house, so. Right. Maybe that's, they that's wanted to like, give me a hug or something, though. Yeah. Maybe yeah. it would have been a good time. They got a little nervous. Let, let's a little hope. coffee, let's hope. I hope. you know. Yeah. yeah. Why not? Maybe a little cookie. But, but yeah, no, nah, man, I think that would be dope. Like, kind of like behind the scenes. Totally. Just come out with your saxophone right there and see how people You don't do that already? No. See how the culture out here fucks with it. I, I haven't had a whole lot of opportunity to. Yeah, there it is, bro. I would love to. That'd be awesome. My middle name is Opportunity. Opportunity. <laughs> Opportunities. Nice. Victor right, Opportunities Rodriguez. <laughs> Mar <laughs> Opportunities Vic. <laughs> there we go. There we go. What what's uh what's no, on but the it's, schedule? It's good, it's good to try you know different things and see what oh, works. Yeah, I'd love that. I do like that idea. I think that'd be good for both. Are of you saying me. what's on the schedule for tomorrow? Yeah, what are you guys going to do tomorrow? So tomorrow we have a session with the producer duo SNC. They produced for g Easy, Caitlin, Stellar, a uh, couple of the big, yeah. bigger artists. But Both of you? Yeah, yeah we're doing So yeah. are you guys, like, session. dropping music soon? or? Uh, I mean, we're right now, uh, today, we made a song for me that he was a co-writer slash producer on tomorrow. Mm-hmm. We're, we're going to work on a song for him that nice. I'm a co-writer, yeah. producer on, you nice. know. But... So for your guys' like contracts, y'all just help each other out, obviously. Like, yo, let's yeah, yeah, but write we, something. We'll get super royalties informal. on each other's. You know what would be stuff, dope? You know? Yeah. And one of your vid- videos have us in the background there. Hell yeah. Why yeah. not, bro? You sponsor my music no, video. There it is. <laughs> I mean, yeah, if it back. makes well, sense. You know, I mean, because you said you, uh, you got no, me thinking now. On some real shit. Yeah. I think yeah. it makes way more sense for you I'm guys how, as how a business to yeah. sponsor a music video than it does to sponsor a concert or a fight. Because, like, I don't know if I would buy something because I saw a logo on someone's shorts. Hold on. Sell me on that. Sell me on that. Why is that? But in your opinion. Y- one, bro, one thing, you watch a fight once. You watch a fight once. You watch a music video a hundred times. If you like the song, Done, you watch I'm the music sold. video a ton. <laughs> <laughs> that's, oh, an also, that's an excellent point already. That's an excellent point. He's not fucking like lying. Yeah. The song, that's a great or, point, no, if, if the song blows up, uh-huh. the amount of views that it gets is Look, check it out. This is what we're going to do. Oh, no, I got a funny-ass story on this whole sponsoring a song. You you mind if I share it real quick? Yeah. All right. All right. So this is a true story. This just took me back. I you, know. I know. I don't think you know this. This, this is not related to Marvin. It's pre Victor. This is, is uh, no. I knew Victor, but um, you were working is, together. No, no, no. Yeah, this was. Uh, I'm trying to like really pinpoint it. It's probably like like five, six years ago. Mm-hmm. This I, I, we'll bring it back. Don't forget what you were gonna say. But right. um, speaking of uh, being in a music video and stuff. I was I was at Kenneth Hahn Park, which uh, do you know where that is? Nah. No, Kenneth Hahn Park is a park in South Central, and I was working out with my boy Javier Benitez. Shout out to oh, him. Oh, I've been there. Yeah, I remember going. With okay, you. yeah, yeah. So we've done hikes there and all that shit. And long story short, this dude was filming a music video while I'm at the park working out, and he put me in his fucking music video. Uh-huh. And it's on. I, I'm sure I'm trying to remember the name, but it's hilarious because. He's uh, an African guy, and 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 I think he's got like uh, he's he had another artist with him, and he's Jamaican, and they're going hard on their song, and it was a nice song, but I don't I don't I'm I'm in my gym clothes, <laughs> I'm, I'm like <laughs> fucking hitting I'm burpees. Just the, they gave me no a flag. Way. They gave me a flag to wear. <laughs> Bro, I'm in the background. <laughs> These guys are going hardcore. Like, you know, they're so like you guys at a concert they're doing their thing. I'm like waving this. <laughs> <laughs> just I, I'm so out of place. But it was just, it was fun. I mean, they they had no. Pr- I, the whole theme of the song was like 
inclusion and bringing people together. So I guess yeah. that made sense. <laughs> That's just <laughs> fucking like, Marlin just after a work <laughs> fucking sweaty. I'm waving a flag. It's just like <laughs> anywho. I, okay. As long as long as we don't get no flags to wave, you know. I don't well, want well, any. You want to know what's actually so funny is when you guys were talking about that. The thing I was thinking of was, what if we were waving a Marvic flag? Mm-hmm. <laughs> nah, I mean, I, I, well, that could be that could the, be the, a little different. The way I'm envisioning is just having us two there. You know, we're Marvic. What better house instead of even a merch or maybe even us just wear just shirt. standing there? It's like yeah, or being I feel, part I of that feel shit. Like, nah, I like cooler. you guys up or something. Yeah, some some like you know was good. Like yeah, it's like that. Nah, like to be honest, not I don't want to just stand not there. Not even Realistically, that, the Take best. My, fucking, I'll have my truck right there, the eighty five. Have Rudy in that shit. I would say Wait, the I, best. Okay, the I'll best thing, the that you could do in a sponsored music video would be. You know how sometimes they have like we'll just be in the Beats headphones like in a sponsored music video where they'll have a shot of the ear and just the beats for like two seconds? Yes. Just like subliminal marketing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We could do something like where at the beginning the title screen's like Marvic Productions Presents and then like have the logo somewhere like in the background of the video, like subliminal marketing. Yeah, we could work that out. Okay, actually though. I like to be in the video. I, in have, the a, I have an idea for this. <laughs> what if like if you guys were to sponsor a music video, it would be crazy to shoot like a portion of the music video at least of like just us going crazy in this room in the podcast set like Like going crazy like i don't know just like like doing music video shit like yeah listen uh we're that's all the creative side i'm i'm for it i mean i'm i'm genuinely like i like the idea i mean this is this is really what we're getting into is is our sponsorship deal and create a song that has kind of like an office vibe we'll be right there sitting down handling business and you just come in singing around us. yeah that's something we could do like if you guys talk about heartbreak a lot he's he's dealt a lot with that we could have him (laughs) we could have him with you know some shorty breaking his heart and you know the the tears will flow naturally you know we won't need to but no hey this all jokes aside i do like the idea that we can we can work that out work it down in the DMs. Like, man, I'm already envisioning you in a suit with, you know, no beanie, just purple and black hair. Marlon right there, me right there. We're talking business, and you just kind of come in. With and, the contract and then on you the table. S- you sit down, nah, and he you needs, just he, he need, You need just that seen. pimp fur coat. Oh, the fur coat? The, yeah. Is it purple? If it's purple, you just no, come it's in, black. bro, take a seat. But it's got to be hell. Yeah. yeah. No, I, you guys will be talking. I come in with the contract, and then you guys sign it, and then we shake hands, and, like, you know. Some shit like Some that, business. You know? And then yeah. money falls from, like, the ceiling. Right. Yeah. And, and then cool. LeGrand, LeGrand the comes with a sax. And LeGrand yeah. is on the table oh, with a saxophone, saxophone in a business meeting? That would come be on, crazy. Now. You get on top of the fucking table. That's Yeah, I just, like, spin in a little circle on the table. Come on. bro. You feel that, Bryce? Right, right. right. Bryce, Bryce feels he, that. He feels that. Bryce, Bryce like, yeah. Now I'm sold on it. Bryce, Bryce is sold like, that. There it is. Nah, for sure, Maybe man, I should but, play the trumpet. Th- that'll be something uh, we could definitely talk about, man. For no the one future. take our ideas, by the way. Yeah. Just, uh, hey, whatever. don't take that idea. Yeah. See you. But yeah, no, um, it's a pleasure having you here, Legrand. Yeah, how are we pleasure meeting you. Thank you. Yeah. Five minutes. We could wrap five it minutes? up there. Yeah. Let's yeah. wrap it up. Sounds good. Um. Yeah, G. Like Victor's saying, appreciate you coming. Um. We hope you had a. Last I had a great first. time. Yeah, and and you'll notice we, we time just flies like this. It's Dude, not, it's it's not enough. It's I was not worried time. I was gonna come on here and like not know what to say, yeah. but or not it say was enough. Packed. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I I have a buddy actually the guy who I told you about the merch earlier that sells stuff like that. I told him to come on the podcast. He he's a y- much younger cat, and that's his fear. He, he's like, no, I need to do more with my life because I feel like if I go on the podcast, We're like chatting, bro, I, it's I'm only start. I'm only gonna talk yeah. for five to ten minutes, and you know, it, it's a it's a like we were talking earlier be- before we started. It's all it's all in the mind. mindset. It's yeah. all so in I was your like, thoughts. Oh, what happens if there's an awkward silence? Well, yeah, then like, well, one, you could just edit it out. Two, that didn't happen at all. Like, right. not only that, bro, but there there has to be a start where people could look back and be like, oh shit, that's. That's, that was that's where they grew from. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's yeah. where they grew from. I think it's all going to be downhill from here. How could it get any better? Exactly. <laughs> it's all going to be downhill. <laughs> We're planning music videos. <laughs> We're getting We're waving wasted. the Marvick flag. We're the Marvick videos. flag. Oh, shit. That's right. Yeah. yeah. No, but uh, <laughs> thank you. Thank you to both. We, <laughs> Bryce, we Bryce, on that one. Bryce is a loser. Hey, <laughs> if, if you make Bryce laugh, bro, you, you did something good. So I know yeah. I'm a winner. Yeah. Hey, this was a good episode. Yeah. Hey, Rudy. Bro, hey, shout out, man. Thanks for your Shout out to you, G. Um, you made this happen, and, and we Let's appreciate you, you for thinking of us. I mean, of course, bro. I'm sure you got other plugs for a podcast, and I know it's not the whiskey that's bringing you back. So <laughs> I haven't drank since I've been. Bro, next time I got to bring a driver so I can get lit with y'all. Yeah. Sure, sure. So, yeah, sure. next time we got to plan it right, I mean. My birthday is on Friday, so I'm a. Uh, are you gonna be in town this weekend? 
I know, I know you. Won't Honestly, be. I think I, I think I'll be around on Friday. Are you gonna be in Thousand? Damn. All right. Uh, you leave but, us on a yeah. guest list, uh, bro. Anytime I got like you know a guest like Legrand flying in, staying over. Yeah. I'll bring him through the pod. I appreciate that. Yeah, we appreciate that. That, that, that means you. a lot for us. And um, anything we can do to help you guys out, mm-hmm. you know, let us know. And sweet. Hopefully, yeah, this is the beginning of something. So yeah. awesome. I would love that. Yeah. Thank, Thank you, boys. Appreciate it. Hey, Thank you, Thank guys. Thank you, guys. Appreciate everybody tuning hey, in. Let, let, me, let, me give a, let me give a quick shout out real thing, quick. Do your thing. Go hey. ahead. There you go. Uh, yeah, good. Shout out again. to uh, my Spotify, Rudy Wade. YouTube, Rudy Wade. SoundCloud, Rudy Wade. Apple Music, Rudy Wade. That's some okay. Oh, yeah. R-U-D-Y-W-A-D-E. Uh, Instagram, Rudy Wade Music. TikTok, Rudy Wade Music. <laughs> <laughs> it's like listening to the credits of a movie. Uh, yeah, Spotify. I'm LeGrand. YouTube, I'm LeGrand, or LeGrand Shorts, if you want to watch YouTube Shorts. TikTok, I'm LeGrand, you'd never guess. Uh, what else is there? Apple Music, still LeGrand. Mm-hmm. Uh, never ending LeGrand. Just all music, it, LeGrand. I'm not the electrical music, company, really I swear to God. <laughs> Yo, hey, maybe next time we can get you with the sax. I will yeah. definitely be my sax dope. next That'd time. Dope, yeah. And, yeah. And lastly, Marvick Production, if you guys love what we do and what we're about, make sure to hit that like and subscribe button. You know, we appreciate it. And uh, we'll continue to uh, produce more, more videos for y'all. Thanks, fam. Appreciate Peace. it. Peace.